So we have this more precise definition of signed area uh, being directionally determined. And I'd like to update the basic diagram that we have, make it a little more refined to reflect this new insight. So we'll just list out our x of t, our v of t, our a of t. And we still have the same basic structure. with slope here and signed area here but here's where we're going to make the change we're going to talk about the signed area from A to B that's going to be our new way of specifying signed area some starting point A, some ending point B and then the initial position, which in this case is x, that will be x of a. What does that mean? It means that whatever your starting time is, whether it's 0 or some other time, you put down that amount, and then you add to it the signed area in going from that point in time to the point in time that you're interested in. Similarly, we're going to say this is signed area, just as before, but we're going to do it as a to b plus what's our initial velocity? We're going to write it as v of a. So this serves to emphasize that whichever direction we go in, as long as the signed area is properly calculated based on the direction, then our initial condition can be a starting point anywhere in time and our initial velocity can be a starting velocity anywhere in time. And since we keep focusing on point B as to where we want to know the final position and the final velocity, let's also update the slope. Namely, this is really saying give me the slope at point B, give me the slope at point B where B is our particular choice of time. So we've refined our definition of the basic diagram. We're going to continue to refine additional concepts as we move forward. And one of the ones I'd like to return to has to do with velocity versus speed. So at the very beginning, we decided to choose velocity as a way to represent how the rate of change of position, how fast we were going basically, and we chose velocity over speed because we wanted to be able to designate it as both something that could have positive values as well as something that could have negative values. There is, however, a place for situations where we do want to talk about only the magnitude of the velocity, and so for that we're going to use the word speed. So let's now clarify. So velocity is both a magnitude and a direction. Now magnitude I think is pretty well self-defined. Direction in the case of one dimensional calculus, one variable calculus, let's be clear that the only aspect of direction that we can talk about is whether it's going to the right or to the left or correspondingly whether it's a positive or a negative velocity. I suppose we could also talk about it going up and down sometimes but not both at the same time. However as you go further along in calculus you'll encounter situations where we're working in two or even three or more dimensions and there the direction becomes much more significant. So speed is just magnitude. Okay. Always positive. And so another way to think of it, and we'll do this, we'll just say that the speed at a particular point B is the same as the absolute value of the velocity at that same point. 
So let's take a look at the graph that I have and see if we can't create the corresponding speed versus time graph. So we've got velocity versus time in black. Let's create speed versus time in uh, dotted blue. I'd encourage you to pause the video, draw the graph yourself, and then check to see if you get the same answer that we do. So what I have here is um, my velocity starts at negative 10 and goes to 0. So my corresponding speed starts at 10 and goes down to 0. Here, the velocities are positive, and so the speed just tracks right along with them. Now my velocities become negative, and so the speed has to correspondingly go in the opposite direction, like this. And then I'm back to positive velocities, so the speed goes right along matching it. And only here at the end, when the velocity turns negative, do I have to show that the corresponding speed looks like that. I hope that's the same thing that you got. One final concept with respect to speed that turns out to be important is whether the speed is increasing or decreasing. Now let's remember that speed is, of course, connected to velocity. And velocity is, to begin with, a rate of change. But now we want to know whether that rate of change itself is changing in a positive way or changing in a negative way. And it's worth talking through the four situations that are possible. Because while some of them are intuitive, some of them seem a little unexpected. Let's take a look at this graph one segment at a time. Here from 0 to 1, what do we have? Well, the velocity is certainly positive because any point above the t-axis is positive. The acceleration is positive because the slope here is positive. Now, is the speed increasing or decreasing? Well, in fact, it's increasing, and I think that's fairly obvious why. But let's next come to this circumstance. This is the second possibility. And here we have uh, still a positive velocity because we are above the horizontal axis, but the slope is clearly negative, and so the acceleration is negative. And in this situation, we have a speed that is decreasing, and I represent that with the minus sign. Okay, here's where things get a little trickier. What about here? Well, the velocity is negative. We know that because it's below the x-axis. Similarly, because the slope of the velocity curve is negative, the acceleration must be negative. But what about the speed? Well, often students will think that the speed is decreasing, but in fact the speed here is increasing. Now why is that? Well, think of it like this. If this were an automobile, then it's going backwards but it's going backwards faster and faster. The speed is increasing even though the velocity is decreasing. And then finally we have a situation here where because we're below the horizontal axis the velocity is still negative but the slope is now positive. The acceleration is positive. And what's happening? Well the speed is decreasing we are slowing down. Another way to think about this, if you like the graphical approach, is the issue of whether the speed is increasing or decreasing can be determined by whether you're moving away from the horizontal axis or towards the horizontal axis. When you're moving away from the horizontal axis, the speed is increasing. When you're moving towards the horizontal axis, the speed is decreasing. Let's recap what we've learned. First, because we now understand that signed area depends on the direction in which we compute it, we've refined the notation that we use. We now talk about the signed area from a point in time A to a point in time B. 
and by the definition of how we worked out signed area we can see this equality namely that the signed area of a to b is the opposite the negative of the signed area from b to a then we went back and talked about speed and the relationship between speed and velocity concluding that speed was simply the absolute value of velocity always positive only having a magnitude and not giving any information about direction finally we constructed this table to help us understand the relationship between velocity and acceleration and whether the speed is correspondingly increasing or decreasing and as usual I encourage you to find someone your pet goldfish your neighbor's dog or another student to explain these concepts to